in his hut. He splashed hot water all over me again. I am heading over to the salt baths today and I wanted to do it early in the morning so there wouldn't be a lot of people. Trying a sulfur bath in the iconic Abanotubani district is one of the most memorable experiences that you will have in Georgia. Apart from its health benefits, locals come to the baths for the experience and the ambience. In fact, the history of the sulfur bath is the history of Tbilisi itself. After all, the location of the city was chosen because of the hot springs that run under it. Plus, in case you don't know, Tbilisi roughly means a warm place. According to legends, King Vakhtang Gorgasali discovered this while he was out hunting with his falcon, of which has been immortalized as a statue near the baths. There are about 10 working bathhouses that you can choose from and most of them are found in Abanotobani with averaging temperatures of 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. You can choose from public or private rooms and the public or communal bathhouses are cheaper at 5 to 10 Georgian Lari per person per hour. Rest assured, they are gender segregated. Whereas for private ones, it starts from 50 to 100 Georgian Lari. Some of the most popular ones that you can choose from are Gulos Thermal Spa for its authenticity, Number 5 Sulfur Bathhouse for its public bathhouse, and Royal Bathhouse for its design. But the top favorite will have to be Shreli Abano or Orbiliani Baths. And this is exactly where I went off to. Shreli Obano, excuse me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but yeah, this one is a bit of a luxurious option amongst all the other bathhouses in Abanotubani. And you can clearly see it in its exterior facade and its interiors as well. Their website is extremely helpful for giving you the range of room options that you can choose from. If you're with a big group, they even have this amazing royal apartment that can accommodate up to 12 people and it only costs 400 Georgian Lari per hour. Now much like Japan's hot springs, Georgia's bathhouses are best enjoyed naked. You might find someone wearing swimwear in the public bathhouses, but it is generally frowned upon, especially since everyone else will be in the nude. It's really not a big deal for everyone. Obviously, if you have a private room, you're free to go nude, but if you're more comfortable wearing swimwear, that's fine too. Just take note that some fabrics might react to the sulfur in the water, and if you booked a kisi or kisa, which is basically the traditional massage treatment in Georgian bathhouses, you would need to keep your bottom bikini. But the massage person called mekise will ask you to take off your bikini top before he or she starts the massage. So basically, this is what happens when you enter a sulfur bath. First, you check in at the reception. Even though you can easily walk in to book an experience to these bath houses, it often helps to book ahead of time. If you want to have some extras such as towels, slippers, or scrubbing mitts, you can buy this at an extra cost. If you don't want to pay for any of these items, of course you can just bring your own. Now this was my room and it was incredibly spacious. Over here, yep, that's just the machine room, <laughs> and then... Those are the telephone lines for the reception, but she told me that right now, unfortunately, their phones are not working. And then, the toilet. Oh, by the way, if you're going to have a massage, make sure that you don't lock the door or else they won't be able to go in. This one is sauna? No, it's not. It's just a dressing room and that's for disposing the towels later. seating area which also has a TV which is pretty cool finally the sofa bath it's not that deep you can sit there it's a pretty sculpture right there sitting area that's the showers and for my massage I guess this is where it's gonna be 
if you want to order something they have a meal right here but yeah like if you want something you should order it beforehand when you're paying at the register now take note that it will start to get steamy the moment that you enter the room so if you want to take photos you should do so as early as possible it's also safe to leave your valuables at the resting area and you can even lock the door to start the bath, get naked or wear your swimwear. It's advisable to take a shower before jumping into the sofa or pool. Take note that it can get really hot, so do take your time entering the water. And then, the idea is to hop between the sofa bath and a cold pool, if it's available. If not, just take a cold shower. You can do the sulfur soap for 5 to 10 minutes, but if it's your first time, you should take it easy because you can easily get lightheaded. And if you start feeling this, it means that you need to stop. I also recommend bringing your own cold water while doing this experience so that you don't get dehydrated. It is hot, but it is not as hot as the ones I had in Japan. And it's quite similar. Uh, the only difference is that right now I'm in a private room, but in Japan I usually do it in like a public hot spring. So everyone else is also naked in one big room. I can't really just book private rooms in Japan because they are much more expensive. In here, they're quite cheap. I mean, not that cheap, but still very affordable. I've been here for a while now. I'm already sweating, so I'm gonna go out, take a break, and then jump back in again. Have you heard or seen a Turkish hammam treatment? Well, the Kisi exfoliation massage is similar to this. And at Trelli Abano, it costs only 20 Georgian Lari and it will last for 10 to 15 minutes. My Kisa massage has just finished. Yeah, she left the traditional scrub for me. I guess I can take it home scrub my own dirty self. So how was the experience for me? As you can see, my body is a bit red and sore. I don't know if it will have the same effect on you, but I have very sensitive skin. But yeah, uh, it wasn't as painful. I think it was only painful somewhere around my legs because when she splashed the hot water on my body after she did the scrub, it felt a bit painful. <laughs> so basically the whole experience went like this. She told me to take a two minute soak in the sulfur bath before she scrubs me. I mean, she asked me first if I already went inside and I said yes, but she still told me to soak a bit more. And after that, she told me to sit down. By the way, she speaks good English. And then once I sat down, she started scrubbing my arms and I felt a bit embarrassed because I saw some, I don't know, dirt coming off my skin. <laughs> And then once she was done with my arms, she told me to lie down and then she started scrubbing all over my body. By the way, during this whole process, I asked if it was okay that I had no top. And then she replied to me like, even nude, okay. <laughs> but I kept my underwear bikini on. So yeah, she just proceeded to scrub me and then she told me to turn around and she scrubbed me on my back. And once she was done with that, she splashed hot water all over me. She was very, very thorough with the scrubbing on my body, which I really like. I mean, sometimes it was a bit painful, but it was bearable. And then once she was done with that, she, she had this big towel, which I guess she lathered soap on. And then she kind of wrung out the I don't know how to call that. The foam, the soap foam out of it and then started to spread it all over my body. And then as a final touch, she splashed hot water all over me again and then that was it. I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. Even though I actually thought I would hate it because I never really enjoyed body scrubs, but I did. So I gave her a big tip and she was so sweet. She was like, I love you. <laughs> and I said, I love you too. But yeah, it was quite cheap. The cost is only like 20 lari and I didn't mind giving a bit more for her for the service that she has given me. Anyway, I still have some time left, so I'm gonna take a dip again before my time runs out. Honestly, I would have loved to do two hours, but yeah, my budget only allows me for one. <laughs> And I had to rush uh, putting on my clothes back because my time was running out. 
But yeah, I didn't even have enough time to dry my hair. Anyhow, the whole experience, I totally recommend it. Their facilities are awesome, it's clean, and the massage is also great. I suggest that you don't skip it. So after the sulfur bath, I've definitely worked up an appetite. So I'm heading over to a restaurant in order to have early lunch. After all, I also didn't have breakfast, so this is going to be perfect. A lot of people say that this is a must try when you're in Georgia, so I'm gonna try this one. It's a cold dish, and for my hot dish, I'm gonna get roasted chicken liver. So I asked for lemonade, and I guess this is what it is. I didn't know that it was gonna be soda. It tastes just like Sprite. I finally got my eggplants and walnut. I think in Georgian it's Nixvani, but Nixvani. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. But yeah, it looks so good. The eggplant is really good. As for the, currently eaten, the middle part is, so I'm gonna slice it so that I can taste both. It's really good. I'm glad I ordered this. <laughs> mm, so good. Honestly, I wish they had rice, <laughs> but I'll make do with bread. Overall, experiencing the sulfur baths of Tbilisi is a must to try, especially if it's your first time in the city. All in all, I hope this video helped introduce you to the whole sulfur bathhouse experience in Abano Tubani. And I hope that you will stay tuned in for more of my Tbilisi adventures as I will soon post my last and final video in this series. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.